Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to your courthouse and the commissioner's meeting. Before we start our regular meeting, we're, we need to have a hearing on rezoning issues. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, rezoning requests in Pleasant Township for R1 residential to ACR Agriculture Con Conservation Recreation District, and I will open the meeting. Michael. Okay, so what we're presenting to you today is uh, a request to the rezone uh, 15 parcels that include approximately uh, 600 acres going from uh, R1 residential to ACR. Including in that is 84 McKinley Avenue, which is the former uh, Pleasant Township Elementary School. Uh, the current owners are Rick and Ricky Ristoff. They're, they're here today. Um, the parcels that are being asked to be rezoned range in size from the smallest is probably around 10 acres to a couple that are 200 plus acres. So they're very large parcels. Uh, every single one of those parcels, the, the owners have signed agreements to have those rezoned. Um, one of the challenges is, is the, the schools, schools are, are allowed in an R1 district, but when they're decommissioned, the use of those large buildings is not compatible with the R1 district. And to compound that, um, the Warren County School District now, when they sold that property, they put a deed restriction on it that it can never be used for a K through 12 school, which limits it even more. Um, the school district used that building for many years. I don't know how many as a warehouse for the district. So they had small trucks coming in and out of there. Uh, the, the largest part of the rezoning is the property that's behind that, that school going up over the hill to Elk Road in Pleasant Township. Um, back in 1965, when the county first, first became zoned, those parcels were all zoned R1 with the anticipation that housing may be needed and they, those could turn into development. So obviously over the last 60 years, that never happened. Um, so the current owners are here today to answer any questions, any concerns that the public or the commissioners may have. Um, this rezoning request was presented to the uh, Warren County Planning Commission on August 6th at their regular meeting and they recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve the rezoning as it's being asked. Uh, ben Mahaffey, the zoning officer, and myself met with Pleasant Township on multiple occasions to talk through this. They are also in the favor of that rezoning. Uh, the property was posted on September 4th with copies of a legal notice and a proposed map showing all the parcels involved. On August 28th, uh, because of the size of this, we sent out over 150 letters to the adjoining property owners advising that this was being re requested and that they were free to call us, ask us any questions, or come into our office. The legal notice was also posted in the Warren Times Observer twice as required by law. Um, our office has received probably around a dozen calls. A couple people have come in. We had uh, probably two calls this morning. Most of those calls were asking, how does this affect my property? Am I included? What's it going to do to my taxes? Um, I don't believe that we had anybody who was objecting to it. Uh, so we're open to any questions that you may have. Or if I could point out uh, just a couple of things. Uh, the, on the question of what does it do to my property in terms of taxes, assessment looks at the use of the property and not what the property is zoned. So there would be absolutely no effect on on taxation of those, those properties. Michael also mentioned the number of notices that went out. In the county zoning ordinance when it was first developed, the um, planning commission at the time put a condition in there that uh, property owners within, I think it was 300 feet yeah. of the perimeter of the affected tract were to receive notices on public hearings held for the proposal. Because this is such a large piece, with the uh, number of properties and the sizes of the properties, we had a significant number of notices that the planning department had to send out Correct. in order to make uh, everyone aware of what was being proposed. 
So to, to expand on that, the, the law requires that we notify adjacent property owners within 50 feet of the rezoned properties. And like Dan said, as a courtesy, the county extended that to 300 feet. This did include so many because it, it got into the development in Shelby Circle. Uh, uh, I forget the name of the other one over off of Pleasant Drive, but that's why it's so many. So, so I've been doing this for almost nine years. This is by far the largest number of letters that we've ever sent out. So we, we did explain to multiple people that because Warren County, the entire county is not zoned, that's why they can't use zoning as, as part of the assessed value for a property. So it has no effect on taxes whatsoever. And actually rezoning these larger parcels to ACR is really more compatible with what those uses are now. They're being used as farmland, forest land. Um, actually on Elk Road, there's very few houses, maybe four or five of them right. But we're open to any questions that you may have. I will open the floor for questions. If anybody wants to comment, please. Uh, I'm on Elk, and I'm probably one of those five, but it's, it's my important one. I'm concerned as to, and I went in and got the answer as to why the school was, you know, needed to be more manageable. But my concern is why such a large tract of property coming up over the hill for what I was told the intent was. So my question is, what is the intent of this property for the future? All that large expanse. That's what I'd like to know. So, so I can answer some of that. Yes. So the Could reason that is a little bit. What's that? You can hear. Oh yeah, I can try. Thank you. Uh, my wife yells at me all the time too. So, <laughs> so the there is something that's prohibited by law that's called spot zoning. I heard that. So if you're trying to do just 84 McKinley Avenue, that's just I mean even though that's a large parcel, it's probably eight acres, something like that. Four? I, I can't yeah. remember exactly, but but it is a large parcel. But it could be considered spot zoning. It may not be. Um, that was also going to include uh, properties that they already own that are adjacent, so that would have been a total of three or four properties. Mm -hmm. But <coughs> what we try to do when we have a rezoning is we look at other properties. See, is, it, is it appropriately zoned for what's going on there? So that's why we mentioned like in 65, they thought the large property off of Belk Road may expand into housing in Pleasant Township. And if you recall in the late 70s was when our popula population continued, or it started, excuse me, started to decline and has continued to decline. So it's unlikely, not impossible, that you may see housing developments up in that area. Rezoning it to ACR is more compatible with those very large parcels, but that also wouldn't stop it that if those owners ever decided to have a housing development, they could still do that in ACR. So the purpose to include all those properties is because ACR is more appropriate for those large parcels than R1. And he spoke of uh, spot zoning, and what you don't want to do is create a donut hole effect, if you will, where you have one property, one zoning designation, completely surrounded by a different zoning designation. That, we've seen the courts rule that as being spot zoning, even though it could be a large tract of land. I, I can expand a little bit. One, one of the questions, or maybe two different people asked us, um, if that was going to affect the oil and gas use of those properties. And the zoning has no impact on oil and gas whatsoever. That. That's right. all controlled by the Commonwealth. So there's, there's no risk, I won't say there's no risk, but there's no difference by the zoning as it relates to oil and gas. Any permitting or regulations that they would have to meet, they're still going to have to meet those regulations. Ma'am, could we get your name and address just for, just for the record? Why? Your, just your just your name. So we're recording the hearing. What's his name? He, he's asking for your name and address for the for the record. Oh, Susan Morris, 220 Elk Road. Thank you. Did, did that answer your question? Uh, to a degree. I I'm still concerned. Am I going to have an amusement park next door, or you know? You you, uh, you would it's a not. quiet residential yeah. area. Yeah. And I know houses can be built there, that's fine. You know, yep. I'm just concerned yeah. about Go ahead. down the road. 
Um, I guess more to answer your question, uh, Mrs. Morris, the, um, the intent. Yes. Um, I guess you could say that the intent is no different than the current intent by the current property owners. Because um, and others is on this. Right, and others, but they currently own that Right. That that right. property, so the intent is the same as it would be okay. with the current property owners. Thank you. I think maybe that's what you were. That is what it was. Thank you. Yeah. So, so John Stewart is the owner of yes the bulk of that is property, John here? and he's actually behind you. Yeah. It looks like he wants to be. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can answer directly. Thank yeah, you. Like my brother-in-law. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I run our timber and agricultural operations on the large parcel. Our yeah. intent is to continue to do as they are right now. That's what I'm hoping. We, we yeah. do not want to develop it into residential property. No. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Uh, at this time, we will close the hearing. We thank you for your comments and your attendance. Next, we will move into our commissioner meeting. And I will ask everyone to stand for the pledge and also remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge to give you the United flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, so everyone is aware that the meeting is being recorded. I don't believe we've had any sessions since our last meeting. No, we have not. Correspondence received or outgoing. Public comment. I will open the floor for public comment. That's for Brian. Director Bull, you have the floor. First of all, I want to apologize at the top of my report. I forgot to change the date to today's date, so <laughs> sorry about that. So it is up to date. <laughs> so as of September 19th, uh, total improved properties for collection is at 20985 90 over 97%. Uh, they're currently in Sheffield area, and they're going to be finishing up in Meade Claire, and that will take care of all the residential collection. Uh, Approved vacant, uh, or excuse me, vacant is at 4160, over 77%. Uh, inaccessibles is at 1595. They're going to be sending out a letter to those people basically saying, hey, you know, will you give us permission to come on these properties? And uh, we'll go from there as far as how much response we get back on them. Right. If, if they say no, then would you do a, an assessment? Based on the information that based we have, on the information from, we have available. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, refusals. That's at 288. And that would apply for them as well. Then we'll be able to put uh, whatever we have available to do the assessment. A blind assessment per se. Yeah. Um, they're going to they start a commercial data collection in the city this week. Um, so they'll be working through the city and in the outlying areas. As they move along. Um, our office, we're still doing, you know, spot checks on data collection. Uh, like right now, the, my crew just finished up city work, and so the properties they work in the city, they're looking at what the reassessment database is saying, comparing what we have versus what they have for quality control purposes and so on and so forth. Uh, on the data entry side, they have 16,797 parcels of data entered. So they're over 60% like, over of the data entry already on parcels they've collected. Um, and they're starting what they call their data review. So they have people now looking at the parcels that have been data entered and you know looking for discrepancies, so on and so forth, uh, and starting to, I won't say actually valuing, but starting to head in that direction. Um, and then they're also working on creating neighborhoods. So what neighborhood would be a areas of similar properties that sell for similar uh, values and so on and so forth and we create neighborhoods off that data. 
And as far as the our, our office goes, um, my field people are currently out working in Freehold Township, collecting new construction for 2025 tax year. And then uh, myself, I'm working on a, what we call a tree cover layer um, that we're going to utilize to, for our clean green evaluations for the reassessment. Have you, has there been an increase in new properties from the old assessment? As far as what, well, like new, new, new constructions and, and whatnot? Yes. You had mentioned in a prior meeting about sending out letters of property descriptions. Is that They'll correct? They'll be sending out what we call a data mailer. It's like an informational, it'll basically say, uh, you know, we have three bedrooms, two baths, just general information like that. Okay. Uh, and are, are, you, are you asking for a response or is it just this is what we um, believe in description yes. of your property yeah, is? Yes, like I said, it'll say this is what we're you know, showing um, and then, you know, if somebody has a discrepancy, there'll be, you know, contact information on there for contact and say, you know, well, we have two bedrooms versus three, that type of thing. And then they'll also be sending out um, what I call the I E forms, income expense forms to commercial properties, so we can start collecting that kind of information. So. Okay. So two mailings out, one to property owners with descriptions of their property, and the second to commercial properties talking about collecting debt on income and expenses. Yep. Okay. And we're moving along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything else, Brian? No. Thank you for Thank coming you. today. Thank you. Thank you. Next, any, uh, any other public comments? With that, we'll move into the consent agenda, which includes the minutes of the September 11th hearing, or public meeting, I'm sorry, the financial report. I just want to say we're entering into our budget hearings this week, so we're starting to think about 2025, and so from here on out, finance will be, or for here until the November, December, we'll be focusing on budgeting ourselves for next year. Any comments on the directions of tax collections that you're seeing from a deposit perspective? It seems very similar to last year as far as tax collections go. I think by the end of November, we'll be able to determine if we have been able to successfully collect more taxes because of the village increase or not. Proclamations. Do we have Domestic Violence Awareness Month? Would you like to? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So this proclamation uh, is, is dated, uh, is for October 2024. Uh, it is uh, domestic violence is a crime that's perpetrated against people of every age, race, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic group. Uh, in 2023, a safe place provided direct services here in Warren County to 285 different women, children, and men of domestic violence. Um, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, 119 people were killed as a direct result of domestic violence. Um, and a that 50 of the 119 people killed, 54% of them were by a current or former um, in, in intimate partner. Women, men, and children deserve safe, healthy relationships free of physical, emotional, sexual, and financial abuse. Uh, vi victims of domestic violence continue to need the support of our families, friends, neighbors, and most of all, our communities. Therefore, let it be resolved that Commissioners of Warren County proclaim the month of October 2024 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month and urge all citizens to observe this month by becoming aware of the tragedy of domestic violence, supporting those who are working toward its end, and participating in community efforts. We'll be adopting that this 25th day, I think I, not 25th day of October, how about September? September. Yep. Close enough. 2024. <laughs> Pick them up. So yes, for those who've been involved with the Safe Place, it's a it's a great organization. Um, it does very very good work in Warren County, and so those who are able to support it, either volunteerism or financially, it's, it would be very much appreciated. 
That completes the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to, to accept the agenda? I'll make that motion. A motion, second. I will second that. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Unfinished business. Do we have any unfinished business? No. Right here. New business. Or adopt ordinance 264. For zoning of property from R1 to ACR in Pleasant Township. I will make the motion that we approve the uh, rezoning request in its entirety as presented. I will second that. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Approve agreement with JL Nick. So the JL Nick agreement is just in the event that we need some human resource management and consulting. Uh, if we happen to come across a situation that's unique to us so that we don't have a lot of depth or breadth of experience in, um, it is uh, at the rate of $150 per hour. Um, so we're leaving that under the direction of our fiscal officer to determine in what situations we'll need some additional help. So that is asking. It isn't just as needed, that's correct. So knowing that, I will make uh, the motion to approve the agreement from JL Nick. I have a motion, do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Resolution 3271, application for a statewide local share assessment. We have Kim Slocum, our grant writer, with us today to uh, give us a summary of what this is all about and the need for the resolution. So Warren County is applying for $245,505.27 from the Commonwealth Financing Authority through the state local share account, which is the LSA program, with no match needed from the county. The LSA funds come from revenues generated by the Pennsylvania licensed casinos, a portion of which are distributed to support community projects um, like this. And the project that we are asking for funding for is for two Ford Interceptor utilities and one Chevy Silverado PPV police pursuit vehicle, um, specially equipped for rugged terrain and transporting equipment to law enforcement um, scenes. Additionally, the grant will support the acquisition of a Ford F-250 maintenance truck for countywide tasks like snow removal and trail upkeep. The current maintenance truck will then be repurposed for the coroner's office to assist in, in, in assessing um, scenes um, for use of deaths. So, um, so these resolutions, a lot of the uh, granting agencies require resolutions from the governing body uh, as the way of, um, of saying that uh, the governing body supports this, this uh, application and uh, becomes actually part of the application process itself. The uh, LSA, as Kim mentioned, is, is from the, uh, the uh, local cas for the casino monies. Uh, counties that have casinos in them get their own separate share of dollars to be used for a variety of projects. Counties like ours that don't have a casino uh, are then eligible to apply for funding through the LSA program, which is funding that's collected from all of the casinos and to be distributed into uh, uses in, in uh, counties that don't have a physical casino located in them. So uh, there's no match for this. This is a great way to, um, to fund some of the projects that we have uh, on the burner here. And thank you, Kim, for sure. your effort in putting this application together. And this will be one of four, as you know, I'll be bringing them as they're completely Yeah. The truck for the sheriff's office that they currently have, that's the one that will go to the corner? Yeah, um, maintenance truck. Yeah, the maintenance. I thought the, or the, the oh. police. The current maintenance truck. Okay. Is that right? No, no I thought it was. No, the interceptor that is in, the maintenance truck and, and the police truck are two separate vehicles. Police truck would become a coroner's vehicle. It shouldn't get this grant. Okay. okay, got it. All we need to do is add a cap. Right. Okay. Great. 
Thank you. Okay. You're so, welcome. So with that, I would make the motion that we uh, approve the resolution, number 3271. I'll second that. So motion is yeah. second. Discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, closing commissioner comment. I have none. No, nothing here today. Um, I think I missed my chance. I was supposed to be in um, <laughs> the beginning. Um, at any rate, my name's Amy and this is Linda, and we're representing the Youngsville Library. We just like to make our presence known and um, how much we appreciate uh, the support that you give us, um, support and money and all of that. Really crucial to, li crucial to libraries at this point in time. We all need that. Um, I also have a handout that lets you know all the wonderful programs we have um, at the library, at the Youngsville Library. So uh, thank you for your time, and I'm sorry I, I missed the right opportunity. <laughs> okay. We're both newbies on the board, so. And, um, um, being raised in the western part of the, our county, yes. mm -hmm. going to Youngsville High School, mm -hmm. I follow, and mm -hmm. I see that you your group has been very active. Yes, that our library, yeah. our very small library, has programs every day um, well, uh, for all ages, not just kids, but also adults and people looking for jobs and technical help. And well, the director of the Gunsville Library was here back a few months ago, yes. and we had the opportunity to renew our library cards. Oh, yes, I think I may have been with her that day, too, but I didn't have to speak, so. Very good. Uh, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Herman, do you have any comments today? I have no comments. Very good. So I uh, accept the motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Very good. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thanks everybody for